Welcome to another episode of Eve Business Insider. Today we're talking about an interesting class of ship called a Rorqual. Now this is a capital industrial ship and it actually exists in a category basically all alone to itself. And so it is both a capital and an industrial ship. It is used for mining. It also bonuses other miners uh, and it has some interesting other um, functions that we'll get into in just a moment. So Rorqual is not a new vessel. Rorqual has been around for quite a while. Uh, in the past, it has been relegated basically to sitting inside of a Starbase force field and bonusing other miners in the system uh, when we had a system of command bonuses that, that didn't have an AoE as we have today. Uh, so nowadays, it is a capital industrial ship uh, that is meant to command other mining vessels, and so its primary purpose is actually to sit in the asteroid belt. Um, one of its unique features is the ability to use drones, uh, special drones called excavator mining drones, which at the moment on TQ are quite expensive. Um, roughly, I think about a billion each. I don't know where exactly the price will uh, will adjust to when everything's said and done, but uh, the ship itself costs like 2.4 bill, and with the addition of drones and fitting, you're looking at more like 8 to 10 billion. Um, but it has the capacity to pay itself off through its own local mining boost. Now, of course, if you're part of you know a corp or alliance, as I would hope you'd be in this ship, uh, for some synergies that we'll talk about later, um, then, of course, the value of being able to bonus the other miners that are around you could also be quantified and sort of added to this ship's ability to pay itself off. But primary role is a miner, uh, secondary role bonusing other miners. Now, there's some other things that the ship does that's kind of unique. One of those is, um, is the capacity to compress ore. Um, I think it's also worth mentioning as well that in the past, this uh, industrial core module, which is not new to the game, uh, was never really used. You know, in the early days of Eve, it was used to compress this ore. You had to be in the industrial core mode, which is similar to a siege mode or a triage module. Um, restricts your movement for a period of time and prevents you sort of leaving grid or leaving system. Uh, but that was removed, and so for a long time, like I say, they just sat in pauses and didn't really do that much. So nowadays, the concept is basically you're going to go to an asteroid belt, you're going to deploy, which will lock you there for a period of time, for five minutes, I think, and uh, and you're going to go ahead and mine along with some other miners. And then the consequence, of course, to this is that, well, if you're in a ship in any place that's vulnerable to siege, this is roughly equivalent to taking your dread to a, an anomaly in Nullsec, which... I mean, most people that live in Null know that's probably a terrible idea unless you unless you have some sort of plan to back yourself up, uh, which, of course, we will get into in a moment. And I think that this ship has some pretty serious synergy with a player corporation. And so basically, you guys have to let me know in the comments uh, if you're interested in videos on player corps, specifically on player corps, because uh, this is an aspect that I do have a lot of experience in. I've, I've sort of built corps and and been a corp leader for a number of years in the game, and I think that to fully describe the purpose of Rorquil and to describe its use uh, basically involves you being part of a group of other players who hopefully can band together and, and come save you in the event that you get in trouble, because the purpose of this ship uh, essentially is to be in a place that's vulnerable, and the likelihood that you will eventually get in trouble is, is quite high. Um, so this is a pretty big change for the game. It's a dramatic departure from the way that uh, CCP has organized kind of PvE environments prior to now, which is in a very uh, risk-free or risk-manageable setup. And this is the first time that, you know, I think we have a real incentive both for fighting and for ISK-making on the same grid. And it's a great, for me, it's a great change that I wish they would make more more changes similar to that in the future. So let's take a look at uh, at some of the actual bonuses. All right, so right off the bat, we have bonuses for Mining, Foreman Burst, and Shield Command Burst uh, for 5 and 3% per level, respectively. That puts this in a uh, hybrid category of both a Mining Command Vessel and a traditional Shield Command Vessel. So adopting the, bon the bonuses, let's say, for a Vulture or the Siege portion of a Vulture and adding it onto the Rorqual, it makes an interesting choice. You will have to decide which of those links to, uh, to run, which we'll get into in the fitting section a little bit later. Of course, you do have a fuel reduction for the Industrial Core, which again, we'll get into detail in a minute. Uh, and then some drone bonuses, which are both HP um, as well as damage if you're using conventional drones. And then, of course, mining yield and ice harvesting yield in the event that you're using excavators. So for the roll bonuses, we do have a range extension roll bonus for the uh, remote shield booster that's going to give you a sort of fixed range on the battlefield of what you can impact. Um, and, of course, you have this 90% reduction in effective distance traveled by jump fatigue. So that's going to put Rorquals into the same category uh, in terms of frequency of jumps as jump freighters. So, of course, make sure you check out my video on jump freighters if you're interested in that. Uh, and then we have some specific bonuses that allow it to use modules like the Industrial Core, the Clone Vat Bay, which I don't think will see much use. The Clone Vat Bay uh, typically used to, for players to 
uh, install jump clones, but of course most citadels these days, and you can get citadels very cheap, in fact much cheaper than Rorquals, um, will do that same thing, So, and it's a much more permanent structure. It's, you know, I don't think that clone vats have really ever functioned properly on, on ships themselves, but I guess there are edge cases where they're used. Uh, of course the ability to operate the excavator drones is the primary purpose and, and function of the Rorqual, at least in, the, uh, in how players are using them now. Uh, command burst module, same thing. The panic module, which we'll get into, is called the Pulse Activated Nexus Invulnerability Core, or acronym PANIC, uh, which is really the focal point of the debate or, or, or sort of discussion that's happening right now into the value of these ships and their balance in the universe. Uh, and I think that that is, that, that is definitely a bonus you want to pay attention to. Uh, from there, just, of course, regular capital bonuses, such as the penalty to Entosis links. Uh, we do have a range bonus for the mining and and, uh, and command burst modules, which is great for the AoE. Uh, and then bonuses as well to AoE of survey and cargo scanners. So what is this panic module? Well, basically, CCP, I think, has uh, has followed logic you know, to a certain point with the ship. They figured, well, we're going to make this ship incredibly powerful in terms of mining. Players will want to use it. They'll want to deploy it in the asteroid belts, and, and inevitably they're going to get caught. And so what we want to have happen is, you know, sandbox-type gameplay where perhaps they're defended or perhaps another party arrives to kind of fight the party that's, you know, uh, tackled the Rorqual or something like that. And, uh, and to kind of extend the chance that that's likely to happen, they've installed this module called the Panic Button which is a one-off module, can only be used on Rorquals, and basically this is a uh, an invulnerability window between five and seven minutes, I think, depending on your skill in this module. And uh, and that's basically it. You hit that, you're invulnerable for a period of time, and hopefully that's enough time for your friends to come and save you. Um, unfortunately, the sort of versatility of a module like that, uh, in combination with the fact that this is actually a capital ship, it has some interesting implications. And so as we've seen in the last couple of weeks, people have actually started to adopt this and use it as part of a forward tackling element in capital warfare. Of course, you could use the new um, heavy heavy scrambler modules that are intended for capitals. You could load up mids with that. You could jump in, hit your panic button, and, and unfortunately still be able to scram things. So I think that's a little bit broken. But... Uh, in terms of the value of this actual ship, as I have mentioned, you know, between eight to billion, eight to pardon me, eight to ten billion price tag is is pretty significant for the ship. I mean, it is like a third of a super or something like that. Um, so restricted to sort of the uh, financially elite or at least you know able to support themselves sections of New Eden, not for new players by any stretch of the means. Um, and I think the return, the value in the ship is there. You know, the stats that I'm looking at now would indicate between 250 and 300 million per hour with the current mineral uh, sort of price table is, is what it's able to produce. So certainly it is able to pay itself off, but I think the real value of these ships is, ac is actually in the uh, in their economic use at, at scale. So in other words, if you have a, a perhaps a corporation or alliance that grows to a certain size that you have multiple of these around and, and you can sort of harvest the value of their labor, then by all means, you know, 20 or 30 of these deployed at the same time are going to really do some pretty serious damage to the, uh, to the asteroids around you. And as a result, I think that probably what we will see, or at least the trend that we're seeing now, is, is kind of an inclination towards like a Cold War kind of phase for the game, basically, where groups are, are trying to farm up, they're trying to get their territories nice and safe, and, uh, and defend their assets as they're sort of farming up for eventual combat. So, In terms of fitting on the Rorqual, I do think you have a few options. Uh, primarily, I would say in the rigs, you do have quite a few options, and the high slots as well. Now, for your mid slots, although I've seen some pretty interesting combinations, you want to steer clear of, uh, of basically anything other than heavy shield tank. Um, I've seen a couple really good uh, shield tank variants that involve some X-type complex modules and some faction modules, and I think that the tank stat with that type of configuration is probably uh, more beneficial than anything else that you could do with your mid slots. Uh, as much as ECMs and stuff like that are, are tempting, I know I would stick to traditional shield tank on this one. Um, for your low slots, it's basically almost always going to be uh, Cold Air Navy Power Diags and maybe a damage control. You know, you could optionally throw in like a, um, a drone damage amp or something like that. I would personally, I would not personally, I would rather sit beside a mobile depot and perhaps, you know, switch to that drone damage amp if I had to. But of course, you know, something like one amp might work. Uh, for your high slots, obviously you want to get your panic module in there. Uh, right off the bat, your industrial core, any mining links that you want to run, so you're up to about four to five uh, slots already. And then from there, of course, you can use a shield booster. Um, things like smart bombs or, or heavy energy newts would be a consideration as well. And then last, you might think about um, a Sino or something like that. So uh, in the meta of, of how these are run, I think most of the discussion basically in fitting comes from, well, how do you intend to save them or do you intend to save them? And uh, ultimately, with the drone costs making up the majority of the cost of the ship, 
you know, it's it's really you have no option as to, you know, do I want to have a cheaper Rorqual that I throw away? Do I want to have a more expensive Rorqual that I intend to save? You know, those are kind of uh, removed from the realm of possibility. They're all kind of expensive Rorquals because they will have these drones, and uh, and ultimately the necessity of of protecting those assets is is basically going to lead you down a path that you want to fit these well. Um, you definitely don't want to have any empty slots, anything like that. Uh, one of the major considerations that I would make. Um, so basically I'm going to steer you towards one particular fitting for Rorqual that I think is kind of standing out as, as being the most popular, kind of the best fit. I will put that link in the description, of course. Um, but the choice that, you know, kind of remains to be made from there is like, well, which rigs do I put? I think the rigs probably represent more choice than, uh, than there is in the fitting. Um, I think the link that I'll put in the description is going to use tank rigs, and that's you know pretty beneficial if you do intend to save them, or if you want to, you know, prolong the the engagement, or 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 sort of increase the likelihood that you will live through some sort of nasty turbulent times in your work world. Then I would say go with the tank rigs. But if you're in a situation that you're not seeing very much active combat, um, you're not likely to get dropped on, then I would say probably go ahead with the efficiency rigs, and uh, I will definitely list those in the in the description as well. So basically what that leaves us with is a discussion um, where we have to have, you know, basically some idea in mind of what your organization is prepared to do to save you. So, you know, I don't know exactly where a lot of my viewership is in, in the universe, but I presume if you're watching this video, you're, you're either already in NullSec or you're thinking about NullSec or actually maybe not. I suppose maybe you just came here to take a look at Rorqual and and unfortunately you found out that you kind of need NullSec for it and you need a group that's uh, that's kind of willing to to support Rorquals in order to make the best go of it and so you know I could suggest some quadrants but really it's up to you to kind of do your own research and decide for yourself you know maybe that's a question that you might ask and in, in your recruitment phase is you know what do you do about Rorquals are you willing to save Rorquals or something like that uh, but again leave me a comment and if you're interested I can actually dig into a series about running a corporation that you know might have some pretty serious synergy here. Maybe one day you could grow and and be able to defend your own Rorquals. Maybe that's something that you're interested in. I don't know, but basically that's the uh, synopsis on Rorquals, guys. That's the long and short of it. Um, it is something that I would absolutely suggest you get into. If you are interested in EVE Online, I would say check out, there's a link in the description for 250,000 SP that's going to help you uh, accelerate your early parts of the game. And uh, that's going to be it for this video, guys. So make sure you uh, like and subscribe. And, of course, leave that comment if you're interested. I'm going to be back with more tutorials, exposés, and investments soon. Peace out from EVE Business Insider.